This is a practice exercise video solution. For this practice exercise, we'll get started with the supplied data set Triple Clamp Generative Setup. This generative setup is similar to the one we used in a previous practice, however, the obstacle geometry has been consolidated. If we take a look, you can see that we have obstacle geometry for hardware, as well as limiting the build area of the actual triple clamp so that it doesn't go above or below the top or the bottom of our preserved geometry. To get started defining this, let's hide our obstacle geometry and begin by placing a structural constraint that's fixed at the center. There are other constraints that we could use, but for this example, we're simply going to use fixed, but a pin constraint would also be a good option, and the pin constraint will keep it from deforming as well as rotating or translating in each axis. Next, we need to begin applying some forces. We're going to go to Structural Load and select the inside of both fork legs. We're going to rotate around to a right view, and for this first example, we're going to make sure that these are pointing up. So we're going to rotate them 90 degrees from the selection, and we want to add a value of 10,000 newtons. It's important to note that this 10,000 newtons is going to be a force per entity by default when we're working inside of generative design. And that's going to work okay for this example. I'm going to navigate back to a home view, and I'm going to duplicate or clone this load case. By right-clicking and selecting Clone Load Case, we can activate Load Case 2, expand the loads, and we can edit Force 2. From a right-hand view, I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees or to the minus 90 degree position. Now we're going to have that force pointing down. This gives us another reference point. Next, we need to start incorporating some loads that will cause a twisting or a torsion in the triple clamps. To do this, I'm going to clone the load case one more time. I'm going to activate it, and then I'm going to modify force 3. For force 3, I want to deselect one of the faces, and I'm going to reduce the magnitude to 5,000. In this case, I'm going to have the right one pointing down. And then I want to repeat that force on the other fork leg. Once again, from a right-hand view, this time I'm going to have it pointing up. We'll use 5,000 newtons again, and we'll say OK. Next, we're going to clone this load case and we're going to reverse the direction of each load. So in this case, force five, instead of pointing down, we're gonna rotate it to the positive 90 degree position so that it's pointing up. For force six, we're gonna rotate it so that the force is now pointing down. Lastly, we're gonna take that same load case and we're gonna clone it one more time. We'll activate the last load case, and in this instance, we're going to suppress those two forces, and instead we're going to add a new force. This is going to be a bearing load. The reason that we're switching to a bearing load is because we want to have the load of the forks pushing on the cylindrical inside face. If we were to use a force, it would be equally distributed across both of those faces, so we want to make sure that we're using that bearing load and that bearing load will have a much better result in terms of the realism of the force applied. So that way we want to use it in this instance. When we are having the forces go up and down along the axis of the fork, the force would actually distribute equally along the selected face. And that's a more realistic solution because we're clamping around those forks. We want to continue setting up our study. So we're going to carry on by going into our study settings, making sure that we have alternative outcomes turned on and we'll select OK there. Then for our design objective, we're going to stick with the default minimize mass with a safety factor of 2. And in our manufacturing methods, we're going to use unrestricted, we're going to allow it to explore additive, and I'm going to include all six directions. I want to look at 3-axis and 5-axis milling. I'm going to use the default values for the tool diameter, the shoulder length, and the head. But I want to make sure that I include all six directions for three axes. And then I also want to include die casting. Now, in my case, die casting is going to be in the Y direction. So I'm only going to include Y. I'm going to use three degrees and minimum thickness of one and a half millimeters. These values are all metric because of the units that are set in the generative study, which you can change. Lastly, we want to double check on our materials. This is going to be made from aluminum, but we do have additive as a solution. So let's make sure that we include the additive aluminum material. 
And then we want to go into the Fusion 360 material library, take a look at metal, and we want to make sure that we add the base aluminum. And I'm also going to scroll to a 6061. Notice that both of these have a calculator icon, which means that they have cost estimation if we were to include that. You can use the previewer to make sure that we are exploring a valid solution and that we do have a build volume. If we don't see a build volume being generated, then we have to go back and double check on our preserve an obstacle and potentially create a starting shape. In this case, everything appears to be generating properly. So I'm gonna take the next step I'm gonna generate these results. While it isn't required for you to generate these results to carry on with the practices, it is a good chance for you to explore some of those manufacturing methods, maybe add additional geometry or a starting shape if you wanna drive the shape of the geometry result. And then you can generate the study on your own, noting that it will take 33 cloud credits. At this point, make sure that any work that you've done has been saved before moving on. 